Buying a park home can be a really confusing experience. Believe me, when I started selling them as an estate agent, I thought, wow, what the hell is going on here? This is so confusing compared to selling bricks and mortar. The reason is you've got to do a whole bunch of things that solicitors usually do for you when you're buying a bricks and mortar property. So let's have a look. I'm going to, keep, I'm going to run you through. I'm kind of lightning speed about all the main basic factors that you need to know when you're buying a park home. Okay, number one, you are going to have to pay it all in cash. There's not really financing available for park homes. Very occasionally, you might get a lender who will give you a sort of car loan for one, um, or a loan you would just get a general bank loan. But you, it, it tends to be done all in cash payments. That could be from you know the proceeds of the sale of your own property. It can be from savings. It can be from inheritance. And people come up with the cash in so many different ways. But everyone tends to buy them with cash. And by that, we just basically mean no mortgage. They're not mortgageable. When you go to buy a park home, you will probably have to pay a deposit, especially if you're buying off a park owner who's maybe replaced the old ones that have left the park or or adding new pitches to the park or utilizing existing pitches with new park homes. That tends to be who I work with mainly. However, a lot of the time you'll buy off an individual. So you'll tend, you'll probably have to put a deposit down maybe of about £5,000 or so. If you're buying something that's less than £100,000 in total. There are different rules for different parks, but that tends to be how it works. What you'll then need to look at, say you've transferred a deposit or you're paid in full, you'll be asked to sign a written statement with the park owner. This is basically an agreement with the park to that enshrines, protects your rights and protects the park owner's rights. It's, a, an act, it's underpinned by an act of parliament. There's lots of legislation on this stuff. It's a kind of boilerplate contract, so to speak, which is not very different no matter where you go in the country, across Scotland and England. So... You cover, you want to have a read through that because that goes into detail about a bit about the park, a bit about the, the rules, but not. But it's not really a rules document. It's just more about your rights. But it'll go into details such as how much the monthly fees are. Now I'm talking mostly about residential park homes here because residential ones is what there is not as much information there. A lot of people know about holiday parks, but and they they actually presume that that residential parks, which are made for full time living, open twenty sorry twelve months a year they're not closed that's one of the biggest misconceptions these parks don't close over the winter or, or anything they're open 20 they're owned 24 7 365 because they're just basically housing estates nice beautiful wee housing estates and um, with lovely detached cottages over them which we call park homes and they are beautiful so um they they go so, so basically the residential parks um, they'll have fees, but the fees will be you. You're not extortionate because people think that because holiday park fees are are more expensive, and that's the ones you hear about in the news. So residential park fees in the parks I run, I I work, I run the sales for as an estate agent that I've sold all these in. The, the fees are are at one thirty a month, one fifty a month. So it's not extortionate, and that covers things like groundskeeping, gardening, um, it makes roads, lighting, it make. You, it makes sure that the park is run, that there's a manager who usually lives on the site and looks after the place. So it's very much worth your money considering if it's some places for factoring will cost you that much, um, more than that a month in, in other buildings in Glasgow. So basically, you're going to check that written statement that will have all your rights enshrined in it, the park owner's rights, it'll go through all the terms and conditions. Some people read it to death, and some people don't even bother because how controversial can it be really? One thing that people don't sometimes don't know when they're going to buy one is that when you when you sell a park home, there's usually a commission that goes to the park owner, usually five or ten percent. And it's usually way down the line once the park home has has um has, it's usually People sell them when they've really got no use for them anymore. It's usually when they're moving away somewhere, or they're 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 it's a through a bereavement. So, a lot of people don't buy park homes just to sell them though. They they buy them for the lifestyle. They keep them, hold on to them for years and years and years, and they love the death out of them. They they love them and they keep them and they cherish them. But that that is something to bear in mind if you do have to sell. That's 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 the that's the case because it is inconvenient for the park owner to have um, 
to have people come and go all the time. They like long-term residents. Um, okay, so the one thing you're going to have to look for as well, which you will have to request, possibly, or go and hunt for yourself, is a park license. The parks, These parks are licensed by local authorities, such as Argyll and Butte Council, Glasgow City Council. And as I said, there are two kinds of license. There are um, residential licenses and there are holiday licenses. Some actually have both. Um, but the ones we're used to hearing about are holiday parks. They, those are really tourist, tourist-based um, facilities. It's um, it's a holiday stuff. The, the park homes aren't as girthy. They're not as well insulated. They're not as high quality. They're made for um, like hotels. What I'm talking about here is residential park homes. They're they're built to a, a better standard. The insulation's better. They're generally bigger, and but they do come in all shapes and sizes. So, the residential license essentially. Um, are, are the parks that we're that, that operate is very close to bricks and mortar. So you want to look into the licensing. Just have a glance over it and double check its license. There will be, and sometimes if there's the licenses will expire or relapse, you just ask for it. And the council don't tend to take licenses off people unless there's something crazy has happened or there's been some serious um, wrongdoing. But the license is something you want to just take a quick look at or you want to make sure you have it because these, as I said, these are things that solicitors would be doing for you if they were acting for you. All this um, due diligence and searches and double checking and dotting every I and crossing every T. But, um, and then you want to check that it's got the indemnity insurance document. All these documents, by the way, the license and the indemnity insurance usually are on display somewhere on the site, but if not, you can get them from the park manager or park owner. So, Basically, let's just do a quick summary. Um, cash only, usually to be able to pay a deposit, and that deposit is often non-returnable, especially if you're dealing directly with the park management and ownership. Um, park rules, yeah, I didn't mention that actually. Park rules, you want to um, find out what they are. There's usually nothing controversial, but it just makes you, you, different parts have different rules. They've got different things like age limits and. Um, noise protocols some are for older people some these somebody's parks and some are for mixed people so you just want to check the park rules check there's nothing you're totally not in agreement with usually it's just b7 they've got a whole list of rules but the the, the the mo is really just be civilized and be nice and keep your keep your property clean and tidy and then you'll be absolutely fine so what um and then you've got your, your written statement, park license, indemnity, insurance. That's really all the documents you need. And what you want to make sure you get when you are dealing with um, someone, you want to make sure you get a paper trail. So make sure you're getting issued receipts for all for your deposit and um, you're being invoiced for the full bill of your park home. And, and that you get the receipts after that too. You want to have proof of purchase basically. And if you're dealing with an individual, basically, even it, it can be as simple as just um, writing down something on a piece of paper and having them sign it, and and whatnot. So, you just want to feel comfortable that you've got evidence of you know, a receipt of some form. Park owners can usually sort those out for you if you're dealing directly with those. I do all the paperwork like that for for our customers. But um, if you think this all sounds absolutely horribly complicated, and you don't know if you're dealing with a true professional who's handling, who's selling the park home, and you want all these things, you want receipts, you want invoices, you want license rules, indemnity insurance, all this stuff, and you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, because as I said, you would usually appoint a solicitor for this stuff, but no one does for park homes, because you don't do conveyancing, and there's no land being transferred here, you're signing a kind of ground rent deal with the park ownership. Sorry, I should have mentioned that a little bit more. What you're basically signing in that written statement is a 99-year leasehold. It's a lease. It's a lifetime lease. So it's not, you're not transferring land. The land isn't yours. You rent it off the park owner for life. And it, it is effectively yours. Do whatever, do whatever the hell you want with it. As long as it's within the, the rules, of course. But it is a lease, technically speaking. So, if all this sounds too confusing to you, and it might do, because we're 10 minutes in almost, and I think um, we've kind of just rattled through everything. And if it does overwhelm you, then that's very, very normal. What you can do is you can appoint me to do it all for you. I'll be your guardian angel through the whole process. I'll do all your negotiating. I'll do all your due diligence. I will make sure all the... Everything is legit, everything is safe and sound, 
and that nothing can go wrong. You would usually pay a solicitor, you know, a thousand to two thousand pounds when you're dealing with a property transaction because they do they, this is what they do for you. So if you're interested in getting some representation in a in a in a park home or lodge or chalet deal, then look, just get in touch with me. I will sort you out. I will look after you, and there will be no problems because I know how stressful it can be. We're talking about transferring lots of money here. Sometimes just told the bank details and said, here, transfer it there. You're not giving an invoice, you're not, and you're thinking, and banks will, even, banks will be like, is this, this is a lot of money to be transferring. Are you sure you're doing the right thing here? And, and it's because they're very secure about this and you've got to be sure that you're being looked after. So I would sort all that out. You would be, I would basically provide all the information your bank needs to, calm their nerves because they they don't like people taking out and transferring lots of money actually but they don't banks don't like it they don't like it they're very very um, very careful of it and you know what they're, they're quite right to be because um the last thing you want to do is, um, is is lose your money in some sort of scam so reach out to me if you you need help um buying a park home you will not be sorry that you invested in due diligence i'll tell you that for sure some people just need a helping hand you can do all that yourself though but if you want someone who's experienced and knows every nook and cranny and there might be things i've missed that i've forgotten about because it can be compl it can be complicated it can be complicated so anyway thank you for watching if you got this far i was alan ferguson i'm an estate agent uh, with Keller Williams, Scotia and Glasgow. I, I help people buy and sell property all around the west of Scotland from my base in Rob Royston. I'm, I've sold probably the most park homes out of any estate agent, any individual estate agent in the last couple of years in the west of Scotland, in, in kind of the west of Scotland. So I've got huge experience and huge passion for them. I love park homes. I am saving, I, I'll be, I'll have one myself hopefully soon. Um, they are wonderful things. They are great to stay in full time. They're great to holiday in. Um, the parks are beautiful, and there's so many great ones to choose from. And if, if you want to buy one, if you want into it, just just even just, you, I'm not trying to just give me a call if you want to know a bit more about the whole subject because I'm here to help, and that's that's free help. Representation for due diligence is not free, but I offer free advice. I love it. So. Give me a call. I'm on 07930 668 771. But all my details are down below. Thank you so much.